And welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending November 14th, 2020. This week, Sunrise announced a new anime is in the works for its SD Gundam World franchise, a spinoff of the main Gundam franchise that anthropomorphizes the mecha themselves. The new SD Gundam World Heroes television anime is set to debut worldwide in April of 2021. In Japan, it'll air, in Japan, it'll air on both Tokyo MX and BS11, as well as, of course, the Gundam channel on YouTube. Overseas fans will have to keep their eyes open for updates on worldwide streaming as it gets closer. The new show will continue the uh, SD Gundam World Sengoku Soketsuden anime from last July, but will add new characters to the story, like Goku Impulse Gundam hmm, and Sergeant Verd Buster Gundam. The director, main writer, and CGI director are all returning from the previous anime as well. Um, the SD Gundam franchise has been around for a long time. It began as four-panel comics back in 1980, that's a year after the original Gundam first came out. Uh, after Bandai's chief editor was taken with a drawing submitted by a junior high student that featured a super deformed Gundam drawing with unusual proportions, the franchise has uh, since successfully spawned its own very successful materials of all kinds, anime, manga, model kits, and other toys and merchandise. It's funny because um, I think SD Gundam is one of those aspects of the Gundam franchise that a lot of folks like have heard of or seen of and it just aren't, you know... Don't get into it unless they get into SD Gundam. So it's this weird little thing, but it's popular, clearly. Um, I've seen some of the little SD Gundam things. and mm -hmm. I, They had done, back in the day with uh, Macross or Robotech, mm -hmm. they had started, by the time it started to peter out for the Robotech franchise, you started to see the SD Valkyries mm -hmm. show up. Mm -hmm. And... It became one of those things at the tail end where you couldn't find the full size Valkyries anymore. You could only find the little SD ones. So mm -hmm. it became kind of frustrating. So <laughs> they're cute, it. but it's just, it's hard to look at the real Gundam mm. and then look at that thing and be like, eee, right. it's not as exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want something big war machine. I don't want something that's like a cute little cutesy thingy. And that's the weird thing is that I think. <laughs> SD Gundam got its own fan base in Japan because it was something that you could, you know, park your seven-year-old in front of um, right. or buy merchandise for or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and, and the seven-year-old would still get the Gundam connection and it would still be cool. So, well, they're also, I mean, they're tiny. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if you want to talk about yeah. a full-size Gundam, yeah. like, dude, <laughs> the SD Gundam, if you've got a very small space, they're like little tiny wee things. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, I could I could see maybe that as well. That mm -hmm. it's easier to merchandise those to people who have limited space. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Never yeah, seen yeah, it. You. Never seen it or, or anything. I'm, yeah. I'm one of those. I just like I've heard of it, but I was just like, I, you know, all right, little things want my big gun. gun <laughs> <double>. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so it's also never, hard. Never got an interest. It's also hard because the original SD Gundam was a series of basically OVAs that are parodies of Gundam. Um, so it's all these SD Gundams going around basically retelling the story of original Gundam, but as a comedy. Uh, and like SD characters from Gundam show up as well. So like you have SD, you know, um, Amaro and SD all the other characters and SD Char and such. But, do we, but, but, did, but did we have the famous scene in SD Gundam of... Slap that was heard around. I, I don't believe we do. Um, right. Instead, we get the fashion show by uh, from the the ghosts of all of the dead characters in Gundam that show up God, and do this what? whole fashion thing because there's all these dead girls throughout time in Gundam, and it's like ah, ah, ah. It's the dead so, old wow. fashion show. That just sounds horrific. It's hilarious. Wow. Yeah. Um, no, the dead it's... girl Gundam show. <laughs> Uh, but then it's zombie land for Gundam SD. Yeah. And then they did SD Gundam <laughs> Force, which is this, um, which was very much aimed at like seven year olds. It's, you know, kid gets this, I think, like a key and lets him summon an SD Gundam and so forth. And it's, it has its appeal to that younger audience, but it's definitely not like traditional Gundam. Um, and then you also get Doobie Bots, which is a whole other thing, which we may have to tell about. This was the attempt to bring SD Gundam to America as an American animated TV series where five ordinary Japanese, uh, f sorry, five ordinary American teenagers transform into SD Gundams. Oh, 
wow. Okay. That's huh? Uh, yeah. That's a lot. Hmm. You can find the trailer on YouTube. They they, they 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 did like a little you know promo video for it to sell to networks, who for some reason never bought it. Um, yeah, I can not imagine why. It it they made decisions. They need, they needed a musical. They needed <laughs> yeah, clearly. Um, are you guys aware of the Sailor Moon American live action animated hybrid plan? Hybrid. Did, uh, good guy. Oh oh. Oh, okay. After the show, I'm going to have to show this to you. Um, an American Whoa. company in, like, the <laughs> mid-90s... Oh, my side. Bought, oh. Yeah, they, they bought the rights to Sailor Moon and put together a promo video of, a, of a, an American series where live-action girls would be filmed as the characters... Then when they transformed, it would transform into a Saturday morning American animated cartoon thing of them as Sailor Scouts flying out on space wind jammers um, across space. Yeah, um, it is. It is remarkable. Uh, so wow. there's a song. They did a song. Um, of course they sailor, do. Sailor, Sailor Moon. It's <laughs> it's incredibly horrendous. Um, cringe, cringe worthy. It is all cringe. Um, one of <laughs> okay. Um, one of the Sailor Scouts is in a wheelchair. When she transforms, she's in a space wheelchair. Great, thank you. That's mm, mm, mm. But this, this, uh, mind you, was during the days that you used to see those little logos that said EI or something. It was like mm, educational entertainment. Yeah, mm -hmm. So it's like there were there were the requirements to have you know inclusive educational elements. Mm -hmm. So that that for mm -hmm. its time period that would make sense. There were also musical numbers. Oh. <laughs> Uh, oh, of course there were. Oh. <laughs> this is like Gem and the Holograms gone to hell. Well, and that was the thing. It was clearly <laughs> like, oh, you know, this thing was popular. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> singing in the Mall was popular with Tiffany. This thing's going to be gangbusters. Yeah. Uh, um, Debbie, Debbie Gibson, anyone? <laughs> um, and granted, this was, again, this was like mid to late 90s. So Sailor Moon was relatively new. Like, it had not oh, been yeah. around much. It had been on um, syndication a bit in America. But, it, you know, it could have found an audience. Horrifically. Um, all right. Moving on in the <laughs> news for the week. Find <laughs> um, <laughs> when thinking of watching anime online, YouTube isn't usually one of the best options. Unless you want to watch your favorite show pitched up an octave and in a small frame shot by Naruto fan art to avoid copyright strikes. Anime Log is looking to change that, however. Uh, this week they launched their global YouTube channel, and the anime on there is actually legal. So the channel describes itself as Japan's first official anime channel on YouTube that is available for global users officially licensed by the cross-right holders of TV anime content. Bit of a mouthful, but... Their goal is to provide legal anime content to overseas fans while still allowing Japanese companies and content copyright holders to have control over the channel. As you might imagine, not a massive library of content. Six titles launched with the channel this week. Ahare Meisaku-kun, uh, sorry, Ahare Meisaku-kun, Hello and Before Green Gables, Hungry Heart, Fantastic Children, The World of Golden Eggs, and last but not least, Jungle Emperor a.k.a. Kim of the White Lion. Most of the titles are available worldwide, but some are limited in certain countries because of license. licenses that already exist in those countries. So fans have to check what's available for themselves. The, plan, the channel plans to distribute 100 titles within the next year. Um, Anime Log launched in Japan on August 7th with, with launch content like Blackjack and Future Boy Conan. So please... Oh. Their ultimate goal is to provide 3,000 titles by 30 different companies by the year 2022. So fans should have quite a lot to look forward to. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, yes. <clears throat> now, I'm going to assume this is going to be the usual YouTube thing where it's going to be the maximum number of commercial interruptions. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. So, like, like <laughs> yeah, some, yeah, some of the yeah. ones you see where the, the stream part is like three minutes commercial, three minutes commercial, three minutes commercial. <laughs> that's, that's how this is going to yeah, fund this. Probably, yep. More, more than likely, but I'm still liking the idea of, of this coming to YouTube, and especially if they're going to do that many titles. I'm just mad that I miss Bike Jack because that's not one I get to see mm -hmm. very often. Yeah. And, um, I'm, and that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And I, I'm hoping that they're basically I, launching this with that limited group, you know, so that it can kind of launch, it'll be fine, nothing explodes. And then they can kind of bring in the rest of that material. So we will get Blackjack and, and yeah. oh, Future Boy Conan, my gosh, um, eventually. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, um, I th yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it would just be really nice to not be able to have to see, like, what I normally get on anime on, on YouTube, which is we're going to have a five-minute segment of a Gundam battle, and we're getting to the apex of the battle, and it's over, and you can't find Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight and, five and you know, yeah. and just go forward and just be able to watch the watch the episode. But you know, if you can put up with the free streaming services mm. you know, with their periodic ads, because YouTube now lets you like either load the ads at the very beginning, in the mm -hmm. very middle, or at the very end. Mm -hmm. Now, so that so I think they would probably put it like somewhere in the middle. I guess I don't know, but bless you. Is it nice? But but. Um, Twice. Four times. <laughs> um, I would say that the ads probably aren't going to be. They'll probably tailor it to make the, the ads hopefully not as as cumbersome. But well, still, it wouldn't be nice. Wouldn't be nice to be able to go onto a site, watch a watch a series, and then not have to. I think John, you mentioned this before over in Discord. Um, have to scrub. Your laptop of any mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. No kidding. That company. Yep. You know. Well, and there's also YouTube Premium, right? Like, you can pay five bucks yeah. a month to get rid of all the ads if you want to. Yeah. yeah. So that is an option as well. I just I find it very interesting that they're doing this, and I hope that the catalog they're going to be putting in there is going to be stuff that is genuinely difficult to get in any other place. Mm -hmm. So stuff yeah. that's not easily available in yeah. Funimation or Crunchyroll or Sentai or whatever the other current mm -hmm. streamings. Hopefully it's stuff where it's like those sites where you can find it you better, yeah, not allow your computer to be defenseless from, <laughs> from the virus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, because YouTube we can at least have a reasonable sense that it's going to be safe enough for us to watch with our with our equipment. Yeah, no, that's a great point because I mean there, there's so much of that that backlog of stuff that yeah. probably has been fan subbed. It's out there around, but you know it's not you know no one's like clamoring for that license. Yeah, trying to find space runaway idiom. Yeah, in like a, in its complete format and not on an infected site, it mm. was was a good trick. <laughs> yep. Um, it's. <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. Um, oh man, idiot! That's a. Gr I just realized. Yeah, idiot would be a fantastically expensive yeah. license, and no one's heard about it in America. So who's ever going to do that? Yep. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Um, speaking of licensing, light novels are a great form of media on their own. Not to mention that many of them inspire anime. So it's always good to hear about more light novels being published and distributed. This week, both a brand new publishing label and a new imprint were announced. Square Enix, or Enix, I think it's Enix, announced this week they are launching a new light novel label titled Squex Novel, S-Q-E-X, starting January 7th. I don't care how it's supposed to be pronounced. I'm going to call it, pronounce it that way. Along with the announcements, they revealed the first nine novels will be part of the label. Three of them were previously published by a different company, including... Didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life? And we'll pick up with Squex starting in their next volume. The six new novels joining Squex at launch are all serialized online and all have the extremely long titles that are common to light novels these days. So if you'd like to find out more about them, you'll have to check the article about it. We'll be here reading titles all day. In the world of overseas novel distribution, Seven Seas Entertainment announced on Friday it's launching a new imprint for the publishing of both light novels and prose novels. 
Um, novels will be published under the Airship logo starting in January, with backlist titles being included over time. The company also plans to announce new licenses for the imprint on November 30th, so late novel fans can keep an eye on Seven Seas social media for those reveals. Seven Seas began by publishing original manga, but since expanded to licensing manga and light novels as well. Publisher Jason Dangelis commented that while Seven Seas has been publishing Japanese light novels since 2006, quote, in the last several years, we've dramatically expanded so that light novels now comprise about 25% of our yearly titled list. Damn. So light novels definitely, you know, they're, they're gaining, they're, they're building, they're, they're going up there. Wow. Yeah. Um, I've watched stuff based off of light novels, but yeah. I've never actually ever found a translation that I would that I've read. So um, I was just going to say, I feel like I, I just feel like with over the past few weeks, we've been reading more and more or hearing more and more about more light novels coming out. Mm -hmm. And and I know that's been a thing for this entire time, but it's not something that I've been into. And now I'm just kind of like going, should I yeah. do it? Should, yeah. should I be adding this to my plethora of a mountain of things mm -hmm. you know how am i going to fit this into between my manga my my anime and my you know uh, theatrical version on ice yeah, exactly stuff exactly. you know <laughs> how am i going to this well first you've got a ma you've got a master written and uh and and spoken japanese <laughs> and then you go through <laughs> the entirety of the light novel series and all of the manga and so somewhere in the next. Are you 15, a real fan, years, Steve? Are you a yeah. real fan? Oh, God. oh no, no! Oh, did I? I tread, oh, I tread on that 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 mine. I, <laughs> real uh, fans don't dub. Real right, fans exactly. Sub. Yes. Oh, no. sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Real fans learn Japanese. Yeah. Right. They don't have to have sub or dub. Right. right exactly. Yeah. No. Um. <laughs> Back away, not today, exactly. disco lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the thing is that there's um, that because the thing is like they've n n not really necessarily these companies, but you've got like Haruhi Suzumiya light novels, which there's a lot of story in that they never made it into the the anime series. Um, Boogie Pop is my classic one because there's just all sorts of stuff in the Boogie Pop uh, franchise that never made it in. Um, Although I think most of it is in, in the new series. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to... Spice and Wolf. Like, Spice and Wolf, you know, you get... Yeah. You know, many, many volumes of Spice and Wolf uh, compared to the anime. Uh, so, yeah, that's good to see. Um, Seven Seas had... Uh, this is a story for afterwards. Um, but they, they've had they've had controversies in the past with licensing stuff because it's complicated, you know? And you license something and uh, you'll find out that things happen later in the series that uh, you didn't realize happened, and you're like, oh, ooh, ooh. Uh, So, yeah, it's, huh. it's, it's interesting. Uh, but, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that some a uh, little, little later. A little later. Um, <laughs> Attack on Titan has been a phenomenon since it began, but with the last anime season and the end of the manga approaching, it seems the end of an era is upon us, being eaten by giant titans. Manga creator Hajime Isayama spoke this week at the unveiling of statues in his hometown based on the manga's characters and confirmed that the manga is only 1-2% to away from completion. He said he's been carefully arranging the piece for the finale, like the end of a game of Shogi, or Japanese chess. The fourth and final season of the anime is also coming up very soon, debuting on December 7th. Now, the manga might be ending, but it certainly doesn't mean its publication is over. Kodansha's Bitsatsu Shonen magazine announced this week that Attack on Titan is getting a full-color serialization in the magazine. The announcement did not say when the new serialization will begin, perhaps they're waiting for the original to end, so they're not publishing different chapters of it at the same time, for confusion's sake. Um, Isayama launched it um, in, the, that, in Bitsatsu Shonen magazine back in 2009 with the 32nd compiled volume published last month by Kodansha. Uh, the original anime premiered in April of 2013, uh, and obviously there are plenty of spin-offs and other manga, anime games, etc. Uh, and of course, the live-action movies, mm. uh, and it has more than 100 million copies in print worldwide. What exposure do you all have to Attack on Titan? Have you guys seen any of Attack on Titan? I watched the first probably five episodes. Mm -hmm. um, I <laughs> sorry. Sorry. In the chat, he goes, Yay! It's finally almost over! <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I, 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 I guess I would probably feel that way because I just never really got into it. I, I just, I thought the cosplay was interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how people did the cosplay. I, I thought that was really interesting. Um, especially the people who wanted to dress up as the Titans. I'm yeah. like, well, okay. <laughs> um, but Lar uh, large but, yeah. naked people. Okay. That's easy cosplay, isn't it? That's when you just round the corner and go, Oh, my eye, my eye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please, please. But, um, yeah, uh, I just, it, it just never grabbed, it just never grabbed me for some reason. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, then, and this is one of those cases where I realized that it's kind of like me not get mm -hmm. not getting it. And like other people, like, cause you know, there are people out there who are just obviously die. I mean, look at how well it's done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My hard fans of this, yeah. you know, and I'm just, and I'm the lone guy who's just like, oh, good, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're just like, oh, shunt him off outside of the walls. <laughs> let, let, let the Titans yeah. have Feed him to the Titans. <laughs> yeah. yeah or to say, say, I, I, uh, I got my Attack on Titan cosplay in the closet i got all these tattoos that i had yeah. done i'm a super fan no okay. i'm just all kidding right. um <laughs> I'm, I'm basically the same boat as steve i watched about five episodes i saw it when it was on uh, adult swim mm -hmm. i think yeah. uh so i mm -hmm. i've again another one of these where it's like so many episodes went by and somewhere mm -hmm. my life intersected and i saw a, an episode and i'm like what <laughs> so many yeah. more months go by and again it intersects my life and there's something totally different going on i'm like is this the same show <laughs> yeah and i made those five episodes i literally made the conscious effort because i think phil watched the entirety of it mm. so he's like oh it's actually really really good you should really get into this you know mm. this it's it's really got us a lot of action it's got a lot of interesting story to it i made it to five episodes and i'm just like i it's shown in me. I, yeah. I'm having a hard time, inter, you know, engaging this in a, in a way that I really get my teeth into. Yeah. Ha! Titans eating people. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Tip your service. Mm. Um, so I haven't gotten back to it. Yeah. I mean, nope. and that's season one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> not pretty likely that I'll necessarily get there until I, you know, get that point where we were talking about this sort of dry time with anime with the new stuff mm. it gets me a little i don't want to deal with that i can get back to the backlog and then mm. it could happen again that's how i saw the cabinary of the iron fortress oh yeah was okay i yeah. got kind of sick of the new stuff several mm. seasons ago and, and then i went back and then just it loved the heck out of it watched the whole thing mm. mm -hmm. so, I never discount the chance that could happen. Because if you want to break from all the depressing news of COVID and all, and you just want to go back and just take your mind off things and relax, <laughs> Attack on Titan is just kind of the perfect, you know, yeah, relaxing thing. Uh, it, and, uh, it, it's a great, it's a great family. It's just like Little House on the Prairie. Exactly. Yeah. It's basically chaos. Yeah. Um, uh, it's no, a I, healing, <laughs> relaxing show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had the exact same reaction. It, to me, it was just so, so grimdark. It was just so absurdly grimdark that it just kind of went yeah. over the event horizon for me in terms of I just couldn't take it seriously. Um, uh, you know, it just, it just became kind of ridiculously grimdark. Um, right. And like, I know it's trying to be, but it's just, you know, I was like, okay, I just, mm, eh, not, my, not my thing. Yeah. Emo at its finest, exactly, Jay. Yes. Um, <laughs> You know, okay. Well, yeah, I got to deal with the emo in real life. I don't need to deal with it. <laughs> right. But Becca brings up a good point in the chat is that there are so many people who aren't into anime who got into anime through Attack on Titan. Like, it is very much a gateway series for some reason, uh, which is, is fascinating. Oh, and and don't, don't you know, personal yeah, predilections yeah. don't dictate, you know, global interest. Yeah, I mean, exactly. people who got in exactly. with Naruto, right. who got in with Beyblade. Yeah. Got it. You know what I mean? Any number of these that are gateways, kudos to the people that have enjoyed them greatly and it has led to their great enjoyment in their lives. Mm -hmm. I applaud that. Absolutely. I'm not going to be there with you, but I'm going to applaud it. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Uh, you know, things are popular, it, clearly for a reason, yeah. right? Speaking of popularity, uh, also this week, a few news items to mention that we may not necessarily 
cover in great detail, but worth mentioning, and we'll go into detail if the, these fine gentlemen decide to. One anime film that's been taking the world by storm these last few weeks, uh, and this week is no exception, the Demon Slayer Mugen Train film broke more records this week, surpassing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone to become the fifth highest earning film of all time in Japan. Above it now are only Spirited Away, Titanic, Frozen, and Your Name. Although the current trend, it may not be long before the Mugen Train passes some of those on the tracks as well. <laughs> as of this week, it also became the seventh highest earning film worldwide of 2020, and the second highest animated film behind Legend of Deification, which is Chinese. Um, it was announced this week that Saizo Harawata and Miyakoku Siwa's Battle in Five Seconds After Meeting manga is inspiring a TV anime. The manga story begins when a candy and game-loving high school boy suddenly finds himself embroiled in a battle by a mysterious girl. Harawata originally posted the manga online before the artist launched a remake with new art in 2015. Uh, manga has over 2 million copies in circulation and 15 volumes in print. Osaka's Asahi Broadcasting Corporation, or ABC, announced on Wednesday that it is producing a TV anime for its cute mascot character, Absi. Um, Absi Study Diary will debut in ja January and follow the titular character, an unidentified mysterious animal, sort of like the Loch Ness Monster, who was drawn to ABC's headquarters by the radio waves five years before. She becomes a new employee at the Ibishi TV station, a wordplay on ABC, and works to improve herself with the help of her new friends and colleagues. Sounds cute. Of course. Um, San X's adorable round Sumiko Gurashi characters are inspiring a second anime film sometime next year. Uh, the announcement was made this week, week on for the one-year anniversary of the first film's opening. Uh, this franchise began in 2012, features a cast of odd and slightly negative characters who like to stay in one corner of a room. Um, notable members include Penguin? There's a question mark in its name. A penguin who is unsure if it's really a penguin. Tonkatsu, a, an uneaten piece of cork, pork cutlet. And several other animals with similar strange characteristics. The first film tells the story of the characters discovering a mysterious picture book in the basement of a cafe that they frequent. In addition to the films, the franchise has inspired games, toys, books, and various other merchandise. Not to be dismissive, but Japan. To celebrate its upcoming second season, Laidback Camp partnered with Hello Kitty to produce the three-episode miniseries Hello Kitty Camp, where Kitty, dressed up like Nadeshko, guides viewers through scenic points of the Yamanashi Prefecture. The, the episodes are only available for short times. The first episode streamed on YouTube until number 8th and featured Hello Kitty visiting... Pardon me, Fue Fukigawa Fruit Park, I think I got that right, and sampling a special parfait with the voice actress of Ogaki Chiaki provided, providing the narration. The second episode will be November 16th to 23rd, and the third from November 30th to December 7th. Aww. I got a um, <laughs> Yeah. Finally, it was announced this week that the previously announced anime adaptation of the Sword Art Progressive Light Novel series will be a film, not a series. The film will be titled Sword Art Online, the movie The Aria of the Night Without Stars, because we cannot have short titles in anime, and will open sometime next year. This series retells and expands the stories of the original light novels and began in 2012. 